Greetings, humans. Today on Exploring Limitations, I'm very excited to finally ask the question, does the cassette brand of your Type 2 cassette affect the sound of your recording? Here we go. Okay, a while back I did a cheeky video where I tested Maxell Type 1, Type 2, and Type 4 and asked if you could hear the difference. This was an artistic experiment because as you know, if you're watching this or if you don't, the Porta Studio machines are pre-biased for Type 2 cassettes. So by putting in a Type 1 cassette, you're gonna get a duller sound. By putting in a Type 4 cassette, you're not gonna live up to its potential standards. But we're artists. Artists. We're painters. We're painting with sound. If you haven't seen that video, uh, link is here. It's a good one. This is kind of a follow-up to that video. Up until today's experiment, I've exclusively used Maxell Type 2 cassettes on the Porta Studio. But I had to ask myself, and this is the whole point of today's video, can you hear the difference between different brands of Type 2 cassette? These different companies had different formulas. So I was just curious if there's a big difference or a small difference? I have no idea. We're gonna get to that today. Before even trying different brands myself, I asked you, the Made on Tape audience, which cassette brand do you prefer to use for your Porta Studio recordings? And the results are in. I gotta pull them up just to remember them on my phone. 44% of you said Maxell tapes. 30% of you said TDK. 14% of you said Sony. 4%, not very many, said Denon, 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 I never know how to pronounce that company's name. And 8% of you said other. Today we are shooting out eight different cassette brands. Let's meet the type two cassettes. Maxell, 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 Maxell. TDK, Sony, Denon, 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 Bass, 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 Fuji, SKC, and the Dark Horse, the only cassette that is manufactured in the present day. NAC, National Audio Company. Editing Chris here. Uh, you're gonna hear me say in this video multiple times that NAC is the only manufacturer of Type 2 cassettes, and that is not true. Uh, there are two other companies, at least that's how they're labeled. ATR Magnetics, and as many of you know, Tascam itself has put out a Porta Studio cassette. Whenever you, uh, you hear me in this video refer to NAC as the only Type 2 cassette, it's not true, but it's close enough. Where did I get all these different cassette brands? Well, I have to give a huge shout out. Many of you might be familiar already with the YouTuber Cassette Comeback. Amazing content for really specific cassette details. There's a branch of them that's now shipped out of Canada. So I ordered these from Canada. I'll just put the link to that website below so you can go perusing. Seven of those cassettes came from there, but the NAC cassette that is manufactured today, the present in Missouri somewhere. So it's gonna be very interesting hearing how that comes out versus these older brands, time tested, but not being created. I tried to choose cassette brands that are still really, really easy to come by. You know, again, I'm a man of the people. All you gotta know now is that we're artists, we're experimenting, we wanna hear the difference between these different bands, bands, brands. So let's get to the experiment. I recorded a little piece of music, drum machine on track four, bass on track three, guitar part on track two, and a keyboard part on track one. I did not change any of the settings, and then I put in another cassette and did the exact same thing. And I performed it to the best of my abilities the exact same way. So anyway, I did that for every cassette. And when I play these back, no settings will be touched. There's gonna be a series of listening tests coming at you. So to prime your ears, today we are really going to use the Maxell Cassette Type 2 as our control subject. At least I'm going to play the mix for you right now so you'll be able to hear it once. And then in the future listening tests, you're gonna have to pick out which one is the Maxell tape. Can you hear the difference? So first, let's just play the mix. All 
All right, you got it? This is all in good fun. I'm gonna play the isolated drum track from the Maxell tape. And I'm gonna play the isolated drum track from one of the other tapes. And you're gonna have to tell me which one is the Maxell tape. In other words, can you hear the difference between these brands? It's gonna be an A or B situation. Which is the Maxell tape? A or B? And I'll even let you know what cassette brand it's going up against. So let's, let's just get to it. All right, what do you think? Could you tell which one was the Maxell? If you guessed A, Maxell, that's correct. The first one was the Maxell tape. If you guessed B for the BASF, BASF, you also guessed correct. What do you guys think of the difference between the drum sounds? Is the BASF, BASF, a little bit duller to you? It seems a little duller to me. Let's do a couple more of these drum examples a little bit faster. Now we're gonna go Max L versus TDK. That's gonna be tough. Ooh, it's a bit tricky, eh? The first one you heard was TDK. And the second one you heard was the Maxell. Let's do a couple more with these drums. Now, which one is the Maxell? Which one is the Denon? All right, could you tell which one was the Maxell? Again, it was the second one. You heard the Denon tape first. Which sounds really good, but the noise floor was really high compared to the others. Pretty interesting to me. All right, next one, Maxell versus NAC. Ooh, now you can really hear the difference, can't you? So yes, Maxell was A, the first one that you heard. The NAC was the second tape you heard. I'm grimacing because it's disappointing, isn't it? Uh, we're gonna talk more about this in a little bit. Let's continue rolling with these drum takes on the rest of these tapes. Can you pick out the Maxell versus the Sony?
That's another tricky one. Sony was the first thing you heard. So the Max L was B. Sony's pretty good sounding to me for drums. It's punchy. Let's see. I think that leaves us with the last one. All right, and pick out the Max L against the SKC brand. All right, one of those sounds suspiciously familiar to an earlier one. The Max L tape was the second one, B. So the SKC brand was the first thing you heard, A. The cassette smells like crayons. It sounds like the BASF tape. The BASF tape also smells like crayons. Crayons. Uh, last but not least, which one is Max L and which one is Fuji? All right, which one was the Maxell tape? If you guessed A, you're correct. B is Fuji. The, the snare had kind of a funny, not pleasing crunch on it. I thought it was important to go through all the drums for all the tapes because the drums are the, the thing that people use tape for the most. It's the widest range of frequencies. Next, I'm gonna pop in each of these cassettes and play the mix and talk about what I'm hearing, all right? Here we go. Okay, let's start again with the Maxell cassette. Very familiar. All right, there's that bass. So, this is very familiar sounding to me. If you're familiar with the music of Made on Tape, that's kind of the vibe, that's what my ears are tuned to. I, there's not really much for me to talk about with that. Let's go to your second favorite cassette, the TDK. Now we'll talk about the difference. No difference in setting. Let's hear that bass. I really don't think I could pick out the difference. I really don't think I could pick out the difference between these two. They both sound very good. It's very, very similar. What do you guys think? Here, let me hit play again. How do you think it sounds? Is it even, is it slightly louder? Maybe. Again, no big deal. It's, a, it's what I would expect. These are the sounds that I'm expecting. TDK, great brand. Now, let's go to, not this one, let's go to the Sony. This, this was a surprise for me when I recorded. I actually really liked this cassette. Check it out. Yeah, it's got punch. Bass sounds great, very clear. It's punchy. The high end on the high instrument sounds good for cassette. Really, I, I found the Sony to be very, very solid. Very, very solid. I was not expecting Sony to sound that good.
I don't know. I, I didn't have any expectations. I just didn't know it was going to be as good as the type type two that I already like. All right, let's go to Basf. All right, this one smells like crayons. You're going to hear in the full mix how different it sounds. Immediately, one thing I notice is it's quieter. The le there's less volume. The drums are duller. The bass is quieter, it's duller. The high end is pretty similar, but overall, you could probably, if you could rewind and go back and listen to these other three, this tape is quieter and the drums are duller. If that's your vibe, that's cool. Uh, it's not my vibe. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to make music on that unless I was going for a dull sound on purpose, which newsflash could be a, a thing. It could be a flavor. Now, I want you to hear this brand, SKC, right after Basf. I'm highly, highly suspicious that they're related because they both smell like crayons and they both sound the same to me. Check it out. Tell me that doesn't sound like the Basf tape. Yeah, that's... A little bit, it's a little bit quieter, a little bit duller. And there's more, there's more of those drops. Um, if you come from the era where these were the machines that all you had, you didn't have computers, this was before the computer era. I know drops are really annoying to a lot of people, but <laughs> in 2022, I think they're endearing. I don't mind tape drops. They don't bother me one little bit uh, because it lets you know. It's so organic. You don't know when it's happening or how or why. And uh, it becomes a part of the recording to me, and I don't mind it. All right, let's play this Denon tape. Immediately, it's way louder than the last two. A lot more mid-range. A lot punchier. See, I don't hate it. This part. Uh, that's got a unique tone to it on this, on this tape. Again, the settings were all the same. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, second to last, Fuji. The only reason I purchased this is because, like I said in the intro, this is a very readily accessible brand. You can find these on eBay uh, for cheap. So I want to give advice for uh, things that won't destroy your bank account because I'm not a wealthy person and I, I can't assume anyone watching this is. Most human beings aren't. So here we go. Let's listen. <laughs> is Jeff Bezos watching this video? Yeah. It's a nice mid-range on the bass. Yeah. This is the one where the snare sounds funny to me. The, yeah, this one had a lot of drops in the drums, or, or whatever you call that, the, where it, it's, it's, pff, it gets a little, like, pillowed. I don't mind that when it happens occasionally, but on this cassette, it's happening a lot. That might have something to do with my recording settings, because, again, I changed none of the recording settings from, from cassette to cassette. So maybe this one needs to be backed off a bit. G give them all credit. So far, these are all pretty good usable sounds. So far, the SKC and the Bass are the dullest. But why did I save this for last? Well, uh, a couple of reasons. Number one, this NAC, again, is the only cassette type two formula that is being manufactured today in Missouri. Remember kids, it's not true. There are two others. So that's cool. But for this experiment, this is what it sounds like. Ooh. Listen to those drums. It's bad. 
Dull bass. Dull. Dull drums. Dull drums. <laughs> it's uh, disappointing. We're going to talk more about this in a little bit. Hopefully you can hear. <laughs> this was the biggest difference for all of them. So that was all the cassettes with a little bit of my notes. I have more notes from when I recorded. We're going to talk about that in a second. But back to you, other made on tape man. Do you want to do another quick couple of uh, can you hear the difference comparisons? Just on the whole mix. These will just go by rapid succession now that we've just been through all of that. So can you pick out the Maxell versus the Denon tape? First one was Max L, A, and the second one was the Denon, B. Can you hear the Max L versus the TDK? I could barely hear the difference between the Max L and the TDK. Max L was number one, TDK was number two. Now here's a real easy one. Can you tell the difference between the Max L tape and the NAC tape? That one's really sadly obvious. Maxell again was number one and the NAC was number two. At the end of the video, with no dialogue, I'm going to play all of these switching back and forth so you can hear the differences in succession without my voice. There you have it. What did we learn today? I really wanna know your thoughts below. Do you have experience with different brands? What's your favorite brand of cassette for type two for recording on your Porta Studio? I'm gonna grab my notes from when I recorded this because I know I took some good physical notes. Okay, again, go watch my type one versus type two versus type four video. This machine is pre-biased for type two and specifically mostly for Max L's and TDKs. We are artists here, we are creators. I can't change the bias, so how does the bass sound? How does the Sony sound? Couple of my notes, the Fuji was quieter, uh, duller, and it doesn't take EQ like the others. Uh, the TDK might be louder. The TDK seemed a little louder when I took notes. Ah, uh, the Denon tape. I wrote here that it, there's more hiss, but it takes EQ really well. I mean, it, it sounded pretty good to me um, with my ears today. The bass smells like dirty old crayons and is very dull. <laughs> <laughs> Dull can be okay. These are valuable resources. If you're into recording stuff on tape, don't say no. Don't don't shy away, especially if something is cheap. Just know what you're getting into. Sony, fat, not too dull. Actually takes EQ well. I was most surprised by the Sony that day. SKC also smells like crayons. Is it BASF? <laughs> Very dull, sounds sus suspiciously like BASF. NAC, the big elephant in the room. I was very excited for this video. In my imagination, it was gonna be big praise for the for the only manufactured modern type two cassette. Remember kids, it's not true, there are two others. You can get, you know, order 10 of these for $45 from their website, NAC. For the Porta Studio recording, it was the worst. I highly recommend you watch the YouTuber Anna Dialogues video shooting out all three new Type 2 cassettes, ATR, NAC, and the Tascam. Uh, check out his video, link is below in the description. I'm still gonna make music on them because as I was hinting at before, I would never tell a person, an artist, to not buy any of these. I wouldn't. Just know what you're getting into. The artistic expression that you're going for might call for 
a, a duller sound. I was listening to a interview with Brian Eno uh, relatively recently, and he was talking about doing a, a whole album or a whole piece of music with a low pass filter at like 300 hertz. Do you understand what I'm saying? Here, let me quickly play you what that would sound like. <laughs> he describes it as being like uh, uh, an album where it sounds like you're hearing music next door. And he's one of the greatest musical minds uh, of his generation, great producer. So I'm just saying that to say people get way too caught up in like fidelity when they're talking about cassettes. We're, we're recording on a, a, a notoriously lo-fi format. So just because I'm saying Bass and SKC are dull, I don't mean that negatively, I mean that musically. Like it's the EQ, the highs are not as clear. But that might be your friend and your music. Going back to NAC, I don't want to make it seem like I'm, you know, crapping on this company. I, I used NAC to produce my cassettes, which are available and made on tape.bandcamp.com. I have a soft spot for a man um, American manufacturers. I come from Detroit, Michigan, as many of you know, a, an area that has been lifted and devastated by American manufacturing. Uh, it's a complicated relationship that is not a topic for this channel, but I do have a soft spot for an American manufacturing company. That's why I don't like the fact that I have to sit here and say, this was my least favorite one, and it sounded the worst to me for recording on a Porta Studio. Maybe if enough of you have the same experience, we can give feedback. I don't know if it would help. This was a fun one. You had a little bit of old school, made on tape comparison stuff. I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot. And please share with me your knowledge below. I'm just here doing my best, learning, showing you the process and having fun. Believe it or not, this kind of thing is fun for me. Thanks everyone for responding to that poll. Thank you for your engagement, your continued engagement, all that YouTube stuff, liking, subscribing, sharing, you know what to do. I generally don't call to action for that kind of stuff. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Check out all the links in the descriptions below. Hear my original music, check out my Patreon page. Whatever you would like to do to help support the channel, there's a thanks button down below. Think of that as like a virtual tip jar for YouTubers. I have nothing but love and gratitude for everyone out there, everyone watching this channel. Thank you so much again. Peace and be good to each other. Oh yeah, and uh, get ready to listen to these back-to-back, -back, these mixes. That's it. Peace.